What is your current home address? You would most probably know your home address, but what if I ask you about your cosmic address? More challenging, right? This is our cosmic address. This might be too overwhelming right now, but this just shows how big our universe is and how we are just a very tiny part of it. But to make things less complicated, for now, we will only focus on the planetary system in which we are located, the solar system. Our solar system is home to our sun, moons, asteroids, comets, meteoroids, dwarf planets, and the eight planets namely Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets are categorized as terrestrial or Jovian planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are terrestrial planets, and they are planets closest to the sun. They are called rocky planets because they are primarily composed of rock or iron, with hard or solid surfaces. These planets have molten metal heavy cores and have few moons. Mercury and Venus have no moons, while Mars has two, and Earth has one. On the other hand, Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune are called Jovian planets. These planets are almost entirely made out of hydrogen and helium and do not have solid surfaces. They also have small and dense cores surrounded by layers of gas. Jovian planets also have many moons, and they also have rings. But if our universe is 13.7 billion years old, how about our solar system? Our solar system was formed billions of years after the expansion, roughly it is formed 4.5 billions years ago. But how was it formed? There are many attempts made to explain the formation of the solar system and some of the questions they want to answer are, why the sun has only 1% of the angular momentum of the solar system if it constitutes about 99.9% .9 of its mass? How terrestrial and Jovian planets were formed. Why they are different from one another. And here are some of the hypotheses made regarding the formation of our solar system. The first one is the encounter hypothesis. Based on this hypothesis, a rogue star, a star that is not part of any galaxy and is independently moving, passed close to our sun about 5 billion years ago. And as they had an encounter, materials were stripped from our sun and that rogue star. These materials became smaller lumps which later on formed the planets we have. This theory explains why the inner planets or terrestrial planets are denser compared to the outer planets or Jovian planets. This is because the materials from the sun are denser while the materials from the rogue star are less dense. However, this hypothesis had some problems such as, the lumps of hot gases from the sun and the rogue star will not be able to contract to form planets since hot gases expand and not contract. Also, an encounter between stars has a very low probability of happening. The next hypothesis is the nebular hypothesis. Based on this, the solar system began from an interstellar cloud of gas and dust, called a nebula. The gravitational pull started to condense the gas towards the center of the nebula. This increases the speed of its rotation, causing the cloud to flatten and creating a disk. The bulk at the center of the cloud became the sun we have today and the planets were formed within this disk. This theory was able to explain some important things about the solar system, but it was not able to focus on the mechanism from which the disk turns into individual planets. And the third hypothesis we have is the protoplanet hypothesis, which is just a modified version of the nebular hypothesis, and adds an explanation of the formation of the planets within the disk. Most of the components of the nebular hypothesis were used in this hypothesis. This hypothesis basically states that the planets we have today came from small objects that stuck and collided with each other, and grew bigger and bigger. The tiny dust particles floating in the disk began to stick and collide together, and they grew bigger and bigger forming what we call the planetesimals. These planetesimals collide with each other, forming what we call the protoplanets. Materials continued to collide with these protoplanets, forming the planets we have today. The difference between the characteristics of terrestrial and Jovian planets is because of the distinct temperature zones in the nebula. The region close to the center has high temperatures which only allow the condensation of metals or silicates with high melting points. This is the region where terrestrial planets were formed. Meanwhile, regions that are farther from the center of the nebula has colder temperature, which only allows the condensation of lighter gaseous molecules, forming the gas and ice giants that we have today. Sum up what we have learned so far. Planets in the solar system are classified as terrestrial or Jovian. Terrestrial planets are rocky and have solid surfaces. Meanwhile Jovian planets are mostly made out of gas and do not have solid surfaces. 
Some of the hypotheses on the formation of the solar system include the encounter hypothesis, nebular hypothesis, and the protoplanet hypothesis.